So it's July 16th, 2021, and I'm up here in the third food forest. Second food forest is over there. First food forest is out back. Uh, got lots of Jerusalem artichokes here along in this area. But today, uh, today what I'm doing is I'm coming up and going to harvest a lot of the shallots. These are Dutch red or red Dutch uh, shallots. And so there's uh, just a one little plot here. Looks like I've got to come up here and pretty soon come up and harvest the garlic. It was last week or the week before I came up and I can see I missed a bunch of the uh, scapes up there. I don't know that you can see them. But I uh, have lots of weeds growing up in here. This is not an irrigated bed. Last year I waited a little bit, got to harvesting the garlic a little bit too late. So this year I'm going to try and do it on time. The, the weather forecast does call for some rain tomorrow. Today we got a really nice cool overcast day uh, which makes it very nice for getting some work done. But uh, so what I thought I'd do is see how easy it is to pop up some of these shallots. The shallots when they uh, when the leaves start turning brown and when they start falling over is a good time to come up and harvest them. I'll grab one of the bins here and and just see I got the camera down here yeah some nice looking shallots in here so these are Dutch reds And we got to dry them just like we do with the just like we do with the garlic. I probably won't get them into the uh, on the racks today. nice having really decent soil to do this. It'd be nicer if the soil was a bit drier, but this is okay. And <clears throat> what was I going to say? We did use, um, we ended up using some wood shavings I'm sorry, this is sawdust here. There was an advertisement on Craigslist. Someone was advertising they had a bunch of sawdust in their basement from a wood shop they were, that was uh, no, they were moving. And so I came over and got a load with my dump trailer and that worked out. So these look pretty nice, pretty decent size. Thea doesn't like the small ones at all because, I mean, they, they taste delicious, absolutely delicious. But the smaller they are, the more of a hassle it is to, uh, to harvesting them. I mean, not to harvesting them, to prepare them for our meals. So when she makes our wraps and all, it's much quicker to take a big old red onion and get those processed for our meals. This is a smaller one. Thank goodness it's not a hot day today. We've been really blessed. We got over two inches of rain since the season began, much better than last year. Uh, just south of us in Syracuse, they got a lot more rain this year. Boy. Uh, but I'm not going to complain. Our ponds are low, but the, these, these guys up here have gotten enough rain to keep them going.
and we did find a good way of storing them. Uh, the best way to store the shallots is in the uh, your produce crisper in your refrigerator. Boy, they really do. Ours are still going well, the ones that we harvested last year in our crisper. And we have kept some down in the root cellar as well, but they seem to last longer in the uh, crisper. Dang it, some of these weeds. It'd be ideal if this was a nice hot dry day today. As soon as I get these out of the ground, that is. That wouldn't be so bad. I think the uh, sawdust really helped to hold the moisture in this soil. Because these beds are pretty darn raised. They're, when I built them, I built them two and a half feet high, but of course they've broken down over the last couple years. I got that tap root out. Trying to keep the weeds to a minimum here. So the shallots, for those of you who've never uh, had shallots, uh, the kind of a mild garlicky, mild onion combination, I guess that's how I describe them. I like them, uh, but I'm one of those guys that can eat garlic raw. <laughs> But lots of people, I think, tend to like these. I think they're delicious. They're just on the mild side. And the Dutch Reds are known for their long-term uh, storage. So you can store them pretty well. Okay, I thought I'd share a few thoughts with you regarding how we're growing the shallots and why we chose to grow the Dutch red shallots. So first off with these beds, these beds are permanent raised beds that I built, I think three years ago. And uh, it was compost in our large composting uh, system that we've posted videos on. So we raised the, uh, the level of the soil above our gravel base here and it's all hugelkultur pits below this this area but uh, we raised it about oh about two two and a half feet maybe even three feet initially and then in the aisles going down between the garlic and the shallots here is all wood chips so multiple loads from the uh from the tree service we use wood chips to to do it we will also be doing more uh, more beds uh, in this part of the uh, third food forest in the future. The Dutch red shallots, uh, Allium sepa, uh, I guess these aren't considered true shallots, and I can't tell you what, what's the difference between a true shallot and, and, a, and th these Dutch red shallots. But uh, these, one of the, the reasons that I really like these are that they're pretty easy to process as long as they're big ones and Dutch red shallots can be quite large. Now last year our Dutch red shallots were pretty small because they went through a severe drought. Uh, they uh, have really long storage for, for an onion and all. Uh, they can last over 12 months but I think you have to keep them in your crisper door, drawer of the refrigerator. 
Um, so that's worked out extremely well for us. I haven't checked on the ones in our root cellar recently, but uh, they, can stay, they can certainly store over 12 months in a crisper drawer if they've been uh, processed properly. They're easy to grow. Uh, they're pr very space efficient as well. You sow them in autumn, and uh, I sow them uh, at the same time that I plant the garlic. Uh, I do it uh, between Halloween and Thanksgiving, uh, and we harvest them in mid-July. Uh, shallots are known for their sweetness, uh, especially when you compare them to the onions. Now, I love red onions, and they have a very distinct odor and all, but these Dutch red shallots are really sweet. And the Dutch reds tend to store better than the gray shallots uh, that I'm familiar with or the, uh, the lighter colored ones. So, uh, but they're, they're really good. I think they're called French gray shallots, the other ones. Uh, organic uh, Dutch red shallots are, are very sweet and uh, we enjoy them in our wraps uh, in just about every, every raw form possible because of their really nice uh, sweetness. The soils, they can, they can do pretty well in poor soils and they actually did pretty well in a severe drought last year. Uh, in our composting and wood chip aisle system that we've been using, and I have amended this bed uh, this, this spring when I, I mean, um, this spring I added um, uh, alfalfa pellets and then I topped it with some wood uh, sawdust that was available uh, as well. Try to suppress some of the weeds, but you can mulch it anyway. Uh, we harvest between 12 and 24 bulbs for every bulb that we plant in the fall. So that works really well. Uh, we plant individual cloves with their uh, root side down in, uh, like I said, between um, Halloween and Thanksgiving. And again, we're in zone 5A. And we plant them about two inches deep and we just, it's best to cover them with some sort of mulch. Now, I didn't have any mulch this fall to cover them with, but they did pretty well. The deep freezes that we had uh, did not affect them. And... I choose to harvest them as soon as I see the leaves starting to fall over or just starting to turn brown. And as you can see uh, in the video, the, also our garlic are starting to get a few leaves that are turning brown, so it's time to harvest those as well. Um, these these are, are fairly expensive ones for, you know, a, a pound is somewhere between 16 and 20 cloves per pound, depending on the size of the cloves and all. But uh, I think we're going to be putting an ad on Craigslist and on Facebook to see if we can sell some of these. They're really great seed, seed garlic as well. Uh, you want to try and save the largest ones for planting in your garden. And, uh, and as you can see, they, they do quite well. Okay, I'm out here in the sugar shack. Uh, the root cellar is down below down there uh, not going down there today so I went ahead and took the entire plot of uh, shallots and I brought them out here to start drying we're expecting potentially some rain tomorrow you can see there really isn't any browning of the leaves yet just just a hint of it at this point and uh, I could leave them in for another week to two weeks but uh, I know that things get busy, and if we get a lot of rain, it'll be an issue. Uh, we're not expecting a lot of rain, but we are expecting some rain potentially tomorrow. So I made these multi-purpose racks. The base one here I have on wheels so I can move it around. But they're hardware cloth, old 2x4s, some 2x2s uh, put together to hold the hardware cloth on the bottom and then just enough space for airflow to go between them. And as you can hear, I've got the fans going in here. Uh, I have the windows open as well. Now, most people will take these and tie them up and just hang them. And that's a really good way of doing it. Uh, I just don't have the places that I don't have to worry about the wildlife getting into uh, to do that yet. That's in our future. So it, these are processed the same way as we do the garlic. So by having them 
on these racks, having the airflow between the racks. They're pretty thick in here when you have all this green. There's a lot of moisture content here. I'll probably bring the um, dehumidifier in here. Here's another fan as well. Bring the dehumidifier in here as well. And uh, I just want to get as much of the uh, of the of this greenery to start to, to dry out some before I trim them off and rub off the uh, the soil on the outer surface. Really want these pretty nice and dry, just like garlic, before we uh, get them ready for storage. So this will take a good week for these to get set. Tomorrow I'll go ahead and. Uh, and potentially, depending on the weather, uh, start harvesting the garlic because as you could see in the video, the, the tips of the garlic are starting to turn brown, just like the very tips of some of these ones were starting to dry out. And, uh, and when, the, when the garlic, when these lower leaves start drying out on garlic, uh, once we get to our third leaf, then you're losing some of the wraps that help the storage of the garlic. Fortunately, this year we did have a couple of inches of rain, so that's uh, taking care of the garlic so far this year. Hopefully, I'll be able to get them out of the ground soon and start their uh, curing process as well. We've got to go through curing before we go through storage with shallots, uh, onions, and garlic. I use these racks as well, and you can see this is just uh, half inch hardware cloth, and uh, I use these for the beans. I use it for uh, drying out some plants, uh, uh, the pods for some seed plants as well. So these, these racks work very well. What I'll do is I'll probably make more of these in the future when I get, get more uh, building space to do it because I like them a lot. And uh, yeah, so it works out pretty darn well. So that's our system for uh, from why we select the uh, Dutch Red uh, shallots how we plant them, how we prepare the beds. These are all grown organically, so no, nothing that, that uh, uh, there's no pesticides, no fertilizers, any of those things. The closest thing we use for something that's been processed is alfalfa pot pellets. Uh, and this is the first year we've done that. But it seems like they're doing okay. And again, the alfalfa pot pellets are not to feed the shallots, it's to feed the microorganisms in the beds and it's the microorganisms that feed our plants. So if you found this video of value, please give us a thumbs up, share it with your friends. If you have any comments or questions, please leave them, leave them below. Thanks so much, folks, and have a great day. Bye-bye now.